Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Last Stop Waterfowl Outdoors Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Jacob Robray, guys, and this week, I'm excited to be back in the studio with all of you who are taking the time out of your schedule to join us this week and talk waterfowl hunting here on our podcast, guys. Like I mentioned, it has been a couple of weeks uh, since we last did our, our episode uh, with Doug Blacklock of Cajun Limb Custom Rods. We had a really good time with Doug uh, over at Cajun Limb Custom Rods talking fishing and custom built fishing rods. But now we are back to it. We're back in the studio and I'm excited to get back in the studio and talk waterfowl hunting as we now enter the month of June. It's hard to believe that we are already in the month of June here. Uh, you know, 2022 is just flying by in my opinion, guys. I'm sure a lot of you will agree with that. And, uh, and as we get later into, or, you know, later into summer, that just means that we're getting closer to hunting season. And as we get closer to, to teal season opening up in September, I start to get fired up. I'm sure a lot of you guys do. And we're going to be getting you fired up today as we start talking duck hunting for the upcoming season. Um, the reason I mentioned that I am excited to get back in the studio this week is I have a friend of mine that we are going to be having and introducing here within, in a second. And uh, and my friend that I'm going to introduce, Mr. George Parker, he is the CEO and owner, creator, designer, whatever you want to call it, of Bluebird Waterfowl Company, guys. And we're going to introduce you guys to George and his company, Bluebird Waterfowl, because you guys need to get acquainted just like I did with his products that he is bringing to the waterfowl hunting market. And when I say that, this is something that is innovative. His product that he is looking to release this year for the upcoming hunting season. It is a product that I truly believe could be revolutionary in the in the design that he has with the product, guys. It's something that all of us as waterfowl hunters, especially public land water hunt, waterfowl hunters that are on the move, you're trying to stay mobile, that we could bring to our spreads, that we could add to decoys that we're already using. And without giving too much information away, I'm just going to let George kind of talk about his product because his excitement gets me excited and hopefully it's going to get you guys excited as well and kind of get you fired up as we head into the heat of summer, kind of give you some of that, that hunting season feel to it, guys. So without further ado, we're just going to jump right into it. We're going to get into it with George this week. We're going to bring him in uh, right here with us. And if you're tuning in on YouTube, thank you so much as well. We appreciate it, guys. But for all of you streaming the podcast, wherever it may be, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever the platform is, thank you so much. And without further ado, let's get George in here, guys, and get it going this week. So let's go. Hold on one second. We're going to get George in with us. And there we are. George, what's going on, buddy? Welcome to the show this week. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Jacob. Man, glad to have you. And, uh, you know, you and I, we got uh, acquainted with each other through social media, the beautiful world of social media nowadays. Uh, and I'm glad that you contacted me. You said, hey, uh, I'd love to come on the podcast. I'd love to tell you about a product that I have that's going to be hitting the market this year for hunting season. Hopefully, we say hopefully, so hopefully we'll have it out by then. And uh, I think it's something that's going to, uh, you know, hit the market and be a, a successful product for all hunters out there. So uh, tell us a little bit about your company, George, about Bluebird Waterfowl, how it started and and kind of where it's at now and it's in its <clears throat> progression. Yeah, man, uh, you know, it it wasn't a plan to have, it wasn't planned to be, you know, we, we kind of just uh, stumbled upon it. Um, and uh it turned into just an amazing amazing experience we're we're just along for the ride now it's doing its own thing man uh between instagram and facebook uh the followers are just coming and, and joining up with us on social um having opportunities to do these podcasts and this is something i would never have imagined i would be involved in um you know we we had a real bad hunt one day and uh it just started get it started me thinking just you know i guess everybody's had a bad hunt right exactly <laughs> out, out in the blind just sitting there and they're not flying or maybe they're flying and they're not coming and uh for me i'm always thinking i'm always thinking about new things uh, in my life i've challenged myself with a lot of different things in life and um i just couldn't help but try to think about how we could solve the situation of bad hunting and uh there's a lot of tricks and twists and turns out there but 
The one thing that really caught me and what started Bluebird Waterfowl was a specific bad hunt out in the rice fields up in Northern California. We were just sitting there not doing anything, twiddling our thumbs. Um, and while we were twiddling our thumbs, our spinners were twiddling their wings. And I'm looking at these things and they're just, they're moving so fast and they look so good and everything else is just dead still. Yep. I couldn't help but think there's got to be more that we can do for this particular item, for this spinning wing decoy that we can, uh, you know, animate it. We can, we can create uh, life. We can move water, right? So that's how it started. We just wanted to move some water and we got to thinking about a couple different ways to do that. Um, actually I had some shish kebab sticks from something we had for lunch. So I went out and I stuck them in the end of the wings, uh, you know, so they were spinning shish kebab sticks around and I hit the pole down in the water just enough. So every time they spun, they're smacking the water, you know, and I was yeah. like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So that, was the, that was the first idea. Um, you know, and we actually hunted with that, that day. It was already too late. We shot a couple sprigs and went home, but on the drive home, you know, I was thinking more about it, and uh, my, my good buddy of mine, David, he uh, he was in the truck with me. It was about a three-and-a-half-hour drive home, and we had a lot of time to think. And we got to thinking about this motor that sits in your spread that's perfectly silent and happens to be shaped exactly like a duck, and it's not being used to move water. Um, we had to fix that, man. So we, we started thinking about dropping something down from the motor into the water just to get it to move. We we went over a few different fun things, the golf ball on a string, you know, you name it, anything to get down that was being moved by the motor. And we came up with uh, the animator at the time we called it the cheater um, because here in California, we can't use spinning wing decoys in November or December, December 1st is spinning wing opener. Okay. So guys out here, at least, uh, you know, there's a couple hundred thousand hunters out here, California. And um, we got this motor that's useless for two months sitting in our garage collecting dust, you know. And uh, I started thinking, what can I do to make this thing work well without its wings? So that's where my mind took the wings off. Now I just got the motor. And I started thinking about it and. I'm like, dude, if we put a camshaft on that thing, we could drop down a stick into the water with like a plunger or something and like maybe get some water moving that way. Mm -hmm. So I came home and I grabbed one of my Lucky Duck field splashers or field, field flashers. Um, you know, a lot of guys use them for dove hunting. Guys use them uh, out in uh, the northern areas that freeze over quicker for field hunting. Um, mm -hmm. I grabbed one of those and I took a, a shish kebab stick and I broke it about two inches and I wrapped it with some tape on the outside. If you're familiar with the lucky ducks, yeah. uh, they have a black, they have like a black cavity that the wing goes into. Yeah, right? It's an insert that it slides. Cause I use lucky duck products and uh, I'm a big fan of lucky duck. I, I like the quality of them. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're an amazing product. There's a lot of amazing products out there. Lucky duck is right motor. That's kind of what it looks like. It looks like a little cap and then the wing slides into it as opposed to like the mojos where the wing slides onto the shaft. So I got this shish kebab stick on the outside of this. So every time it went around, it was doing this up and down rotation like a camshaft. So then I took um, a, a, ch a chopstick and I taped a, a, oh, what was it? A safety pin onto it. And I slid the safety pin up over the top of this shish kebab stick. And I, I turned it on, dude, and that thing started. And I was like, what the hell? This thing's working. So. I went into the closet. I got my kid's uh, bow and arrow with the plunger on the front, jerked the plunger off the front. I stuck it on the bottom of the chopstick and I put it into a glass of water on the kitchen table. And as soon as I turned that thing on, it threw about half the water out and I'm going, Oh shit, we're onto something here. You know, <laughs> that's right. Um, so that was the very first iteration of this thing. And uh, it's just gone leaps and bounds from there. We've been through, yeah, I don't know, two, three dozen prototypes and, and different, uh, different ways of setting it up. Um, the biggest challenge for us was matching the, the frame of the animator to the shaft or the cavity of the duck. So once we started messing around with that, I realized that mathematically, and I studied a lot of math in college, we can have a stationary spinning object on one side with the cam moving on the inside. And if you place it right, you can have the other side stationary as well spinning. 
So that's where we came up with this camshaft idea with the wings sliding onto the outside of it. So now not only can you use this product preseason, so guys are taking their ducks out of the garage early season, January, uh, uh, November, December, and putting the animator on there wingless. When the season comes around, you can keep the animator right on there and stack, stack your wing right in there. It's got a little set screw that keeps your wing on, and now you've got the wing spinning. If you guys haven't seen the video of it, bluebirdwirefile.com has got a video right on the front page. You can check it out. But, dude, this thing just turned into a monster. Yeah. I mean, uh, it I really can't... is. I, and, and Josh, to be honest with you, I have, uh, if all of you listening and watching on YouTube right now, if you guys go to George's page, his Instagram page, I know you active on social media, George. Instagram, uh, YouTube, you have a video up on there right now. And, guys, we actually shared that to our Facebook page at Last Stop Waterfowl this week. As a teaser to this episode, so if you go to our Facebook page, uh, we have a video up of the animator right now working from an aerial image. Which, by the way, George, you shot some really good video in the in the promo for it. It looks really good, uh, which that's the point of it. I understand that you want it to look realistic, you want it to look good, and uh, and but you did a great job with it. And guys, go check it out right now. You could be listening to this. Go go pull it up and and take a look at what George is talking about. And, and George, to be honest with you, one thing that really that I love, and, and I'm fired up about it myself about the product since you exposed me to it and told me about it, is it's not a complete setup that somebody's having to buy. And, and what I mean by that is it's not a new decoy that's out on the market. It's not just another decoy that you got to go spend a hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred dollars on a brand new decoy just to get the benefits of it working with it. The way I see it is it's a tool to go on your already existing decoys. That's the way I would categorize it. Uh, would you agree with that? Or maybe you'd like to, you know, kind of explain what, what your concept of it is, obviously. No, absolutely. I mean, you're absolutely right. Um, it is it is a tool. Um, it's a tool in a different sense of the word. I'll get into that in a second. But it, it's an attachment. It's an accessory. It's, it's the first product the Bluebird Waterfowl put out. Uh, like I said, we accidentally stumbled upon this idea of upgrading your decoy. And now that's kind of become the Bluebird Waterfowl mission. But yeah, man, you take your decoy out there, you stick it in the ground. Um, it works with Mojo uh, Elite Series, the large ones. Uh, the teal we haven't really been working with quite yet. The teal that has the, the inch and a half shaft, this will work on that teal. Okay. Uh, the, the new teal, Elite Series teal that has the half inch shaft, we're not... We're not there yet. Um, you know, some of the guys who are just, you know, dedicated to getting this product on that baby teal, I've been telling them to take a little hacksaw, chop off a little bit of that extra plastic on the animator. It should slide right onto your teal. But I tell you, once you cut it up, I can't take it back. So if you <laughs> want to mess around with it, mess around with it. But it, I mean, it's not like it's not like it's not designed for the smaller birds. It works on any bird that it's designed for right now. And the only reason it has to be designed for that bird is because of the way that it attaches to the shaft. So gotcha. Mojo Elite Series Large. We also work with Mojo King Mallard, which, by the way, the Mojo King Mallard absolutely rocks this thing's world. I mean, it is really? crazy how powerful that motor is on that bird. The Avian X Power Flight, we also use that one. Uh, the Avian X has a right and left-hand side that's different sizes. The shafts are different sizes. Okay. If you're not familiar with the Avian X, they created a new wing style that makes it look like the wings stay cupped while they're flashing. It's incredible. I saw product. that. I did see that. That's correct. It's an incredible product, but to dumb proof it, they switched the shaft sizes to make sure you couldn't put the wing on the wrong side so the wings weren't flipping upside down. Gotcha. Um, so – but yeah, so we've got one for the right hand side of the Avian Power Flight. We got one for the left hand side of the Avian Power Flight, and then of course all Lucky Duck products. So far, I haven't been able to find a Lucky Duck product that this doesn't work for. Um, Lucky Duck has had a standard size issue for all of their decoys, as far as I've seen. Even the older ones, yeah. uh, that that black little sleeve cavity that they have that the wing slides into seems to be a standardized product that they're using. And I got to tell you. This thing works great on 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 Lucky Duck stuff. I personally hunt with the field flashers for duck. Yeah. I don't really think the birds care that much about how the body looks. You know, I've killed hundreds of ducks with this little brown. Have you seen the field? Yeah, flashers? yeah, the little pancake style, and it's yep. got the yeah, the motion flashers on top of it. 
yeah, it's just it's it's just real simple. Well, the one I'm talking about is the brown one with the wings that come out the sides. Okay, that's right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. thinking of the uh, the flasher, uh, the ones that float is what I was thinking of. Right, right. No, no, no. These ones, see, I want to make that clear because um, this one won't work if it's spinning on the top, right? Gotcha. The animator won't work. Correct, <laughs> so correct. You got a camshaft going down, and that's not going to make sense. All right, 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 right. No, yeah. I mean, we've got a ton of crazy ideas. We're going to we're gonna continue to use this camshaft and, and, and mix it with different motors. But for now, you got all Lucky Duck products, the Mojo Elite Series Large and the King Mallard and the AVNX Power Flight is what we've designed them for so far. That's awesome. Now, let me ask you this. And me just th thinking of concept, I love, I'm all about motion, man. And that's really one reason when you approached me and we started talking, I was I was like, hell yeah. I, I could see it in my mind. The wheels were turning. You kind of had me on board. When I watched the video, I was like, okay, this makes sense. This is different. This is, this is, this could be badass. And I'm just going to be honest with you, right. you know, and, and it's, and like I said, it's not something that we'll probably use necessarily in all situations that you're going to leave on throughout a whole hunt necessarily but it's an addition to you know in those non-win days the whole concept you talked about you know when things are slow and you're trying to create that movement but but i really really liked the idea that you know of the design of it how it worked and so on and so forth and it was just different i really i really like that um uh, but yeah i mean certain decoys what i was going to ask and what i was thinking getting back to my question is are you limited to maybe how high of a decoy you use or size pole that you use a spinning wing decoy on? Uh, what's the what's the variations there that you have to work with with the product? I, I love that question. And that's an important question to ask because I went through a lot of uh, a lot of testing with different size decoys or different height decoys and different size poles. Uh, a good buddy of mine, Luke Piper, he uh, loves to use the huge poles, man. It looks like he's coming out with a javelin, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He'll stick it in the ground, and then his pole sticks into that pole, right? So That's like me, man. I'll, I'll put two and three together and make a huge extent. I'll have several that are normal height, and then in our spread, we'll have one or two sticking up on the edges, maybe toward the edge of the woods or something like that we'll use that are higher. Right, right. And some guys do like it up higher, and I, and I totally get that. And we do make extension rods. So one thing I wanted to make sure that was an important part of this product was that we didn't have a long pole to begin with. I didn't want folks to be uh, crippled by having a longer rod because the truth of the matter is this product's rod falls into the water and then the plate slides to the water's surface. And there may be a portion of the rod that stays, I'm going to say maybe, but actually more than likely, there's going to be a portion of the rod that stays underwater and it actually assists in keeping the rod straight up and down while it's working. Um, so having it right on the surface at the very end of the rod still will work. It doesn't cause a problem, but I'd say 99% of the time you're going to have a small bit to a large bit of rod under the water. So when I was thinking about that, I wanted to be sure that anybody could use this product with any height decoy that they like. Though it does work more efficiently if you have less rod below the duck. So if you were going to start using this product, you may think about using it on a duck that you normally would keep lower. Okay. I wanted it to be possible for folks that only have one bird that like it up higher to use it as well. So what I did is I made a 14-inch a rod and an 11-inch rod. And so what that ends up being is about a little over two and a quarter foot um, connected together. So they screw in. Actually, I've got one right here. They screw in end to end, and these rods are made of carbon fiber. Now, this is a prototype, so I will tell you these ends are not going to be white. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. But, uh, but this whole rod right here weighs about 8 grams. Okay, so carbon fiber, we're talking, I mean, you know, carbon fiber, you're keeping the weight down. You're keeping, you know, it's ultra durable, I would assume. So there's got to be a – was the idea of using carbon fiber to keep the weight down on the – on the product itself that was part of it but more importantly jacob it was because i wanted the damn thing to float oh, <laughs> good point if, so how many times we drop of, it in the water you dude, know i'm so tired of dropping tools in the water and they, you're digging around in that acidic mud or that alkaline uh, mud you tell get me about your it. hands are all crinkled up falling apart because you you dropped one thing in the water so you drop this in the water it floats Yep, that's awesome. Yeah. That's genius. Yeah. It's simple, yeah. but it's it's a it's a great idea, man. So I'll show you here. So these two ends, this is the these are the two ends. So this is a nylon fitting inside here. Okay. And that nylon fitting's intentionally tapped uh, with nylon, so 
uh, it's going to be a little bit more resistant against the constant pounding of the water. Gotcha. Again, this side is also nylon right here with an all thread that's been epoxied inside the nylon. So you got nylon sleeves on both sides, but this one doesn't come out. So then you take it. So these are the two rods you're going to get. You're, these are the two rods you're going to get with the animator kit. And they do have a little protrusion and a cavity on the flat part, even though it looks flat on the screen. So when you twist it, you'll feel them click into place. Okay. So that right there, I don't even know if you can see it. It's yeah. It's a size. That's pretty that's good a height. Size rod. Oh, yeah. It's about two and a half feet long. Okay. So now you're going to drop this into the water, put your plate on it, and you can use it. It's going to go like that. If you wanted to extend this longer, these are designed to tie in line. So here's an extension rod. You get these in a two-pack for $12.99. These are, this is an extension rod you can get. So this will add another 60, 60 centimeters onto your, gotcha. onto your uh, rod. So you'll, you'll end up with the almost four feet of drop down after you add two more of these extensions. And again, the plate's design, you could see that it's completely smooth. Yep. It's yep. designed to, for the plate to slide right over the top of that if, it, if, uh, if you want to adjust it. So uh, we've thought we've thought of a lot of different stuff, but the pole height and the capability of having different um, different height ducks, uh, that's a really important part because I do not want you guys to be going out there trying to wiggle your duck down just low enough so the plate hits the water. Oh, I push it down too far. Let me pull it back up. And then the duck's tipping over. And there's just so much stuff. Go out there, put your duck in, slap the animator on, Drop the rod down and you adjust the plate to the water height. Gotcha. There's a little set screw on the side of the plate. Gotcha. Yeah, it seems like you thought of it, thought of it, George, the, the potential issues or guys complaining about certain things. But, you know, and you mentioned something just now. You said, I want you to go out there. I want you to just go out there and hunt and be able to slap it on. You know, one of the biggest things, pet peeves that I have personally, and I, we hunt 99%, you know, public land. So as a public land hunter, we're on the move constantly we're bringing gear in and we're trying to keep it as light as we can but we also we're kind of greedy we want that added motion we want that added you know uh, look to our spread so you have to haul equipment in one thing that i really hate though is whenever i'm running late on a morning i'm, I'm running to that specific hole i'm trying to beat the other guys to hold a hunt and i'm rushing to get there and i, I get there and or I'm, i may be running late that morning and I have to set up in a hurry, but I want all the bang in my spread, if that makes sense. But I don't right. want to have to spend an hour setting something up. Right. So explain to the listeners, explain to the viewers on YouTube tonight, if we're pulling up in the duck hole, we pull out our, our spinning wing decoys, we throw it up on the pole, and we want to put our animator on. What's the ne How quickly can that be done? And how does it attach? We kind of talked about that already, but how quickly can that be added to our decoys? Uh, I would say if you take less, if you take more than 60 seconds, you're not doing it right. And I would say that's for a first time user. Wow. If you know what you're doing, I, I mean, for me, I go out there, I slap this thing on and set the plate in 10, 15 seconds, but I've, you know, I made it right. So I'm used to it, but it's going to become a tool that you guys use too. Um, so yeah, I would say anywhere from 30, 30 to 60 seconds, it's on. I mean, That's it's awesome. nothing you need. To, you don't need any tools for, um, I could show you what it looks like here. I got a couple of them right here with me. Yeah. That'd be awesome for everybody on YouTube. You getting, you getting to see this for those of you listening, <laughs> I apologize. Go check it out on our YouTube channel and you'll be able to see it. What George is talking about here. Yes. I'll try to be as descriptive as I can. So, uh, this is a prototype. So this one is white. Okay. Um, they're going to be an injected nylon, uh, black, uh, nylon. So we're actually using the same companies that make, uh, injection helmets for the NFL. Okay. So wow. It's a very, very high quality injection company that I located. I spent a lot of time finding them, but so here on this side, this is the King Mallard. So you're going to see, uh, this area right here is what's going to go over the shaft. The shaft of the King Mallard is massive. It yeah. is a thick, it's a thick yeah, shaft. It's a big boy. Yeah. So, and then on the other side, you're going to have that thing for the wing. So okay. we're just going to pretend that this is uh, this is your animator. What I would do if I was you before you walk out is just twist your rod in. You know, figure out how far you're going to be setting that duck, and I would twist in your rod and just get it set up that way. You're going to take your plate. Let me see if I, I actually got a plate right here. Let me let me pull this plate out here. 
um, you're going to take your plate and I would preset your plate on there just kind of just to have it right there. You know, you don't need to worry about you don't need to worry about how far it's set right now. And this one, <laughs> this one's brown. This is actually one of the first iterations right there. That's that's the original prototype, baby. Uh, so let's see here. So what you're going to do is put the put the plate on. And now, I mean, if you had this in your sec, this, I mean, I don't know. I've been talking the whole time too. That took me about 35 seconds or so. Yeah. So that's yeah. so now you got now you got your animator. Okay. So I'm gonna stuck, I'm gonna stick this down inside my 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 waders, and I'm gonna walk out there with my spinning wing. And let's just let's just pretend there's a timer going, right? So I got my spinning wing. Obviously, your spinning wing spinning wing decoy is already on the pole, right? Like you want to make sure that thing's already set to go. If you're not that type of guy, I guess I'm a little bit over prepared. <laughs> You got rod in one hand. You got your duck in the other. So let's stick it in the mud. We're going to set it down. We're going to get the duck on, set the duck on. I'm going to take my animator out. I'm going to put the animator on. I'm going to snap the wing in, tighten the set screw, drop the plate, tighten the set screw, and we're done. Gotcha. Wow. So, I mean, when you're talking about actually applying it to the bird, if you preset it like this, it's five, ten seconds. Yeah, that's nothing. That's as simple as it gets, guys, right there for a, a very useful tool that we could add to our spread. And, yeah. and I mean, you, okay, so you mentioned something else. I know we talked about putting wings on the on the spinning wing decoy, but I know you've referenced using it without wings, especially in states where you can't have early season spinning wing decoys. And right. basically, you're just attaching it the same way, correct, George? That's exactly right, yeah. Again, what I would do if I was, if I was using this, I wouldn't necessarily bring – my case with the animator case out with me to the, to, to the water surface and try to finagle this thing out there. I mean, if you're that kind of guy, maybe you're not shooting as many birds as you could be because you're being very inefficient. So That's what we're going to do is we're going to set this thing up on land, you know, pop yep. it out, screw the things together, get everything ready to go. And when you walk out, you set your bird in, it clips on just like your wing. So I guess when you're asking yourself, how difficult is this to use? How difficult is it to clip your wing in? Because right. that's exactly the same connection. That's right. So, yeah, the only additional connection is to put the wing on the other side. <laughs> so what, twice the wing speed? Um, but to use it without the wings, this thing is absolutely killer. So the wings do have some air drag, and you will see a little decrease in wing speed when you're using the camshaft. Obviously, something's got to give. We haven't seen anything change with battery life. I've done hundreds of hours of testing, and the batteries are not seeing any change in battery life. The, where, where this is giving, where you're seeing a little give and take is the wing speed. When you add an animator on, you can expect 10 to 15% decrease in wing speed. So that being said, if you're spinning your motor without your wing on it, it's going about twice as fast as it would if your wing was on it. So when you snap the animator on here and you hit that button, boy, hang on to your hang on to your, <laughs> to your britches because this thing just goes <laughs> like it. it it's it gets it. It gets it's it. Gnarly. It'll create some waves in your spread for sure. And um, that was a problem that we had. Uh, I did a lot of thinking about, and that's what kind of came up with the wingsuit to cover up those wingless birds too. And we're going to talk about that in a second. I want to ask <laughs> you about that, but you know. As far as the launch of the product, well, I know you and I talked a while ago. We said, you said, man, I'm trying to get this thing done before hunting season. Uh, you know, what's the, what's the, or, or let me ask you this. This is, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm changing gears on you right here. But as, okay. as a, a, a goal of the company of Bluebird Waterfowl, to me, it all, I mean, is, is this going to be the product of the company or we, do we have, we have, I've heard rumors that you have, a couple of other ideas around around the corner that you uh, that you have out there, and we can maybe talk about it or not talk about it, depending on where you are with that. But is is the mission of the company going to be, you know, uh, tools for duck hunters, or are we looking at breaking out into decoys possibly further down the road? What, what what's the what's the goal here? The end goal? What are we looking to do? Man, I'll tell you what. Creating this company has introduced me to a lot of great creators out there. Billy Campbell's one of them, uh, Allure Decoys and Dr. Duck's Decoys. Uh, there's a lot of great products out there. I know Punisher Waterfowl makes some good ones. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff going on out there that I just don't feel like I want to dip my toes into. A guy's got a lot of work to be done still to battle up some of these bigger companies 
you know, AVNX has done a great job with their products, um, you know, getting them out there for being as new as they are. Um, it's just not something I want to encourage to continuously replace and change your decoys. I totally agree with the idea of adding motion to your spread. If you want to go and get a motion duck and, you know, like the, the, what is it? The pulsator is one of my absolute favorites. Yep. Um, that thing, oh, that thing yes. kills birds, boy. <laughs> yes, it what. does. Um, but Lucky Duck's got some good ones. Um, you know, there's a lot of great motion decoys out there. Go ahead, spoil yourself, pick one up. But I'm just, I, you know, for me, I've got spinners. I think every single hunter has spinners. Um, ex I mean, if you're in states where you can't use them, I know there's some areas where they're, they're just illegal full time. Um, I just wanted more from this duck. I wanted more yeah, from man. this duck. And yeah, to answer your question, man, we're going to start making tools. We're going to start making, we're going to start making accessories for the birds that you already have. I've got two or three ideas in the works. One of them is real close. I'll get into that in a second, but that word tool, you said it earlier. I think that's an important point to touch on because this tool is to be understood for your area. You can't expect to take a certain type of decoy and throw it out wherever you want and shoot birds over the top of it. You can't expect to take your spinning wing decoy and put it out whenever you want and expect to shoot, boot, shoot, shoot birds over the top of it. The reality of it is certain conditions call for certain types of decoys and certain types of decoys require certain conditions. That's and to understand how this is going to work in your spread is the most important part of why I'm even doing these podcasts because I don't want people to think that they're going to take this animator out to their spread and it's just going to bring birds in and that's the end of it. Um, there's a good likelihood you're going to bring this out to your spread, plug it in, turn it on, and it's going to flare everything in sight that day. Those conditions, read the birds, read the conditions. You know, I'm not going to go out and keep my spinner on all day when I'm hearing banging to the left and right blinds and my spinner's on and everything's flaring off my off my blind. I'm, I'm going to try to figure out what's going on. I'm going to change my pattern. I'm going to start the intermittent speed on the spinner. Maybe I turn it off when they're coming to finish. There's going to be something I change to make sure that I stay in the game and stop flaring birds. Now, I can tell you one thing. There is nothing like the animator when it comes to the ripples that it can pr produce in low wind conditions. But even more important than that is the sound that it produces. This thing, it's, it's so difficult to talk to people over the Internet or show videos of how this thing sounds. Because when you hear it in real life, it just sounds like a bird getting up. It yep. sounds like when you're walking out to your blind in early morning and you spook a whole bunch of widgeon off to the side and they just jump up. Getting, you know what I mean? They're, they're smacking the water up. with their wings. Yep. You know, um, it sounds exactly like that, man. And I can't tell you, I, I truly feel like this is going to be a finishing tool for most people. Yep. It might be a long distance tool for some people, you know, but you just want to read the conditions and try to figure out exactly what's going to work best for you. The reality of it is if it's not working, don't use it. And when it is working, use it, but don't get caught without it. Because if you're out there and the weatherman says 15 to 20 mile an hour winds, I mean, I don't know about you, but the weatherman is a liar. Right? Yeah, yeah. All the time. <laughs> right. The, you know, we always joke there. about it. Everybody does. It's the only profession you can mess up 100% of the time and keep your job. That's just That's how it, it is. Man. That's it. And the reality of this product is, is that, when you got five to 10 mile an hour winds out there, how many of us have sat out there in five mile an hour winds and your hair's blowing and the, and the toolies are blowing and the wind, the water's not doing nothing. That's right. The water, unless it's disturbed, won't make that continuous ripple pattern to that gets blown by the wind. Yep. And that's, that's, that's what this product does. It starts the perpetual pattern. This is the only product on the market that hits the pat, the, the pattern in the same spot every time at the same interval. And that's it's there's some math behind it, but what ends up happening is the waves grow as they go away from the decoy. So the initial impacts near the decoy are actually the smallest ripples. The as they push them away, they start to grow. And if you've got five or ten mile an hour winds, it'll pick this wave up and, and push those ripples all the way across your spread. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you could tell there's a lot of science behind this product. And and you know, one thing that I'm thinking as you're talking, George, is that, you know, one, you know, even with some of the best motion decoys or water movement decoys out there, and we mentioned a couple of their names, um, you know, 
even if you take care of them and you, you try to do the best you can to take care of them, what I find is that after a couple of seasons, if you're truly using them on a regular basis, they all tend to break eventually, and then you're you're back at it replacing it. And, and a, I'm talking more specifically about water movement. Like, you know, we talked about the Pulsator. As much as I love that product, what I see, it's a bilge pump. It's circulating dirty, nasty water through a bilge pump. It's recirculating that water, spitting it back out, and taking it back in. That's yeah. very hard on a, on a product, you know, yeah. when it's using that. To where – with and how many product, times is that bilge pump getting clogged up? All the time, especially. I mean, I don't know. I where still you use are. the Pulsator. I own three of them. Uh, I still yeah. use them, but they, they get clogged up. They get clogged up, and, and they're actually the best I've used on the market that I've personally used. I've used some of the other brands, and they, they're just, in my opinion, it's not as good. It's quality. It's not as good a quality. But with your product, you're not recirculating water back through the product. It's something that is freely moving on its own with the power of the wings and it's slapping the water like you're talking about. So I see, I don't even know what your price point is and I, we might not even get into that, but whatever the price point is on it, as long as it's somewhat reasonable and people could, the average working man can afford it. I don't see it breaking down after one, two, three seasons of use because it just doesn't have the wear and tear on the product. Like you see with some of these other products on the market. So that alone, George, in my opinion, makes the value of your product go up as compared to some of the other ones in the market. And I'm not even knocking these products. I'm not trying to knock these products. I'm just thinking out loud and, and based off of what I've seen of the video of it, I, I could see this being way more beneficial, long lasting, long term use on this product uh, for hunters to use for many, many seasons as, as they approach those new seasons coming up each year. Absolutely. And, and, you know, there's a, there's a couple of reasons for that, because like you said this thing doesn't suck up any water. So there's th that's an incredible asset to this product because it'll smack whatever you put on there. In fact, if you try to pick it up and adjust the plate while it's still on, it'll smack you. Yeah. It, it does not. It is. It is not prejudice. It'll, it'll it just smacks whatever surface you put onto it, dude. And that's an important thing because you can be in shallow water, deep water. You can be in straight muck. You could be in straight, soft mud. It will still smack that surface and make that clapping sound that bird's wings make when they smack the same surface. You know, um, it's not ever going to get bound up or caught up. It just it just goes. Yeah, it know? just goes. It yeah, just and works. it doesn't have any moving parts. It's a single hinge, and uh, we have a quality guarantee on it. I haven't figured out what I want to do with that quality guarantee yet as far as time wise, but I want to get it out in the field and see exactly, you know, who's breaking it, you know, how they're yeah. breaking it. Because yeah. I don't think you're going to be able to break it very easily. Well, I can tell you, you send it down here to uh, Louisiana and with all of our, our terrain, different terrain we got, we got saltwater marshes, we got freshwater marshes, you know, lakes, uh, timber hunts you can make. And, and that's, that's been an issue, you know, just, just hunting down here on the coastal regions. Uh, you know, some of the decoys with salt water, that's been a big issue for a lot of decoys. You don't have that to worry about that product with, with your product. I mean, you don't have to worry about that problem with your product. Right. You no, know? there's, there's, there's absolutely no metal parts to this whole thing, except for the set screw, the set screw. We did go with the brass set screw, uh, to, to prevent corrosion. Um, we really want to try to, um, uh, keep that, uh, entire product fluid we want it to be completely motion free no no spinning parts or you know springs or anything weird it's just a simple screw it on that's it and 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 as far as the actual animator head itself uh you know this is this is all straight injected nylon so that hinge is going to go up and down and inside of there is an actual nylon uh, shaft that's a, that's molded as a part of this entire piece. So this can never come off. This will never come apart. And the, there, there will be never a chance for anything inside to corrode because there's absolutely no metal involved here at all. That one little thing you see right there is just a set pin to make sure that that nylon pin that holds that hinge doesn't come out. Gotcha. Um, but even that, you know, it's, it, this, this isn't, this isn't uh, detrimental to the product. If those things start to rust or corrode or anything, the product's still going to work. Those are just little pins to hold the stuff together. And, you know, like I said, if there's ever a problem with those things, if the pins come off or 
I mean, there's only one pin on this whole thing. So. Yeah, I was gonna say it don't look like very much moving parts on it. No, it's just that one. There's that one pin right there, and we're thinking about changing it to a cotter pin. Like I said, this is the very first iteration of the final prototype. Yeah. So this is actually 3D printed on a fifty thousand dollar printer right here. Uh, okay. Most of these pieces were printed right here in my shop. I printed wow. everything. I did all the prototyping right here in the shop. And uh, because we're using CAD files on the 3D printing software, I'm able to send this directly to the manufacturer and they're able to print my product out on their computers, which is the coolest thing in the world. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Technology is amazing, man. Nowadays, what we could do with it. But, you know, George, we were talking about, you know, I, I mentioned that I see this product being able to last several years. One thing that we have a problem with most of us that hunt and especially public land hunters carrying all that gear that we talked about in. If you, I don't know if you are the same. I'm, a, I'm pretty organized, and it sounds like you're an organized person as well. But a lot of hunters are just throwing mojos. They're throwing, you know, AVNX decoys or all of our, our motion decoys into the boat, into maybe a decoy bag if you have it. And it's getting beat up a lot, you know. Now, with something like with, with your product here, I see it being more, you know, uh, it's smaller pieces. It's, it's not a big decoy that you're putting into a slot bag or something like that. So storage of the product. Let's talk about that for a second. I yeah. know you showed me a sneak peek of something that uh that guys when they're going to purchase this product, they're going to get with the product, and or or is it sold separately? Let me ask you that. So this is this is currently being sold with the uh, animator Kickstarter. Okay. So uh, we are on a Kickstarter right now. The Kickstarter, go to Kickstarter.com and search for Bluebird Waterfowl, and you will find. Uh, the animator on there. If you go on Bluebird, if you go on Kickstarter and search animator, you're going to find about 50,000 cartoonists that are trying to sell their artwork. So <laughs> don't, don't go on there and look around for animator. Uh, go on there and look for Bluebird waterfowl. So yeah, let's, so let me show you this thing real quick. I just, I just had it packed up. So let me see. I'll just zip it back up, but this is custom design. So this is what you're going to get. If you go to the Kickstarter right now and you get the super, super early bird, this is the hard case. So this is a hard shell case. Um, it's designed the same way camera cases are designed. So it's kind of like a it's kind of like a zipper with like a hard case, um, and the logo there in the front is embossed. So it's actually you know, and you can see compared to my hand, this case is not a small case. And this is designed not only to hold two full animator sets, so that's six carbon fiber rods if you want, which is what comes with the uh, super early bird package. Um, but it also holds your spinning wing decoy wings. So uh, let's see here if I can back up. Yeah. Let's, so yeah, let's so see if I can expand out on it. Yeah. It's got the pocket in the front and then it's got the, uh, it's got the two places for the plates. The animator head pieces will go on either side here and the rods go right into this little pocket right here. Everything's built in. I actually designed this on the same 3d software that I used on my computer to build the product. Um, so I was able to take the product and put it into a 3D mold um, to create the case completely custom to fit the product as well. So, yeah, if you go on the Kickstarter, the super early bird comes with the hard case. You get two full animator sets of your choice. So you get uh, whether it's mojo, you can get two mojos or you can get two avians. You can get an avian and a mojo. Or if you want to throw a lucky duck, you get to pick two. They come with two carbon fiber rods per animator set and one splash plate per animator set. We have a new product coming out called the Silent Splash Plate, and that's it right there. So you can see, yeah, you can see this one is, is just concave. So there's videos all over the Facebook that you can see, but this is the standard splash plate right there. And this is patent design patent pending, this plate right here, because not only does it make the dabble sound, but it also throws water like crazy crazy it throws it in seven different directions spitting water all over the place but some guys don't like the sound like i said they haven't heard it in person yet they're hearing it on the cell phone and the videos and things like that some guys have said hey you know that thing's loud that thing's gonna flare birds i said all right boys what do you want you want one of these here it is so yep. you get the silent splash plate this is normally an accessory but for the super early bird i'm including two silent splash plates as well so you'll get two animator full kits so that's two animators, two rods each, two regular splash plates each. And then I'm putting in two silent splash plates and you're going to get two extension rods. So if you like your duck up a little higher, 
you're going to get that extension rod kit thrown in there too. So you get the case and all that stuff for just a hundred bucks and that's including shipping. So if you're in the United States, I'm going to ship it to you anywhere in the United States for free for a hundred bucks. So you head on Kickstarter, it's more than 40% off of the retail price. So if you guys are listening to this and you want to be involved and you know that this is something you're going to hunt with, the release of the product is expected in late September, early October. So we might not hit that, that teal season for, for you Texans out there, but um, to have this for the rest of the hunting season, we're going to try to get it out as soon as possible, of course. Um, but you can get your hands on a pre-order right now, 40% off up until July 1st. Okay. So if you guys are on after July 1st, you know, just, you know, just message me, let me know you heard it on the podcast and maybe we'll see if we can get you a coupon code or something to get a little better deal on it. But to be honest, um, you know, speaking of price, I'm keeping the price as low as possible. So we already talked about the injected nylon self-lubricating headpiece camshaft. We got the polypropylene injected plate, so that floats. We got the carbon fiber rods, so those float. All that stuff is the highest quality, and we're asking $34.99 for an entire animator kit. So that's, that's going to awesome. be for one side of one bird. Man, um, I didn't want to touch on price if you weren't ready to, to release that information, but God, no, it's 35 bucks. That is affordable, extremely affordable compared to some of the equipment that we use out there in the field. And like right. I mentioned, this is a tool to add to your spread that's that can only benefit you on those days where things are real tough, you know. And uh, and and the the early bird kits, that's something a hundred bucks for all the stuff that George talked about. That's unbelievable, guys. For a hundred bucks, you get everything you need to get started. And then some with a with an excellent case, which you did not skimp on the case uh, to protect the jar. So great job on that, man. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So it's actually it's a super early bird. So there's an early bird special. There's a couple of get, different packages. Yeah, you can get an animator, a single animator, and a case for uh, sixty five bucks. That's the early bird. Okay. If you want to get the super early bird, it's two animators and a case. And the two extra splash pl silent splash plates and the extension rods for a hundred bucks. And That's then we have the pledge pack. So you see this hat here? Yeah, this got the merch. Here. You got the merch. He's rocking the merch, guys. Bluebird waterfowl hat. You can see a little logo right there. So we got a few hundred of these coming right now. Uh, I just ordered a hundred sweatshirts. Uh, they're coming right now. Um, you can see pictures of them on the Facebook page too. Um, but if you want to get the pledge pack, that comes with two animators, a hard case, one of these fitted hats. They're custom fitted hats. So you can actually see on the inside there, it says Bluebird Waterfowl all along the seams. I mean, I did these hats from scratch. These are not something you go on Amazon and, hey, I want to put this logo on a hat. No, man, I designed these. These are acrylic and wool custom sewn from scratch. These are beautiful hats. They're custom fitted. Uh, one size fits all. So you'll get the hat and you'll get the hoodie. The hoodie is a uh, poly cotton mix. Also, again, I put custom picked those fabrics. I got the sample in. I got the extended torso. So that way it hangs a little bit lower. I don't know about you, but I can't stand when a hoodie starts to ride up on my belt line. I like it to hang down my belt line and be comfortable. That's right, um, man. Us big guys, you can't see me on camera, George, completely, but I'm a big guy. So we right. get that beer belly going and it wants to ride up on us. We don't want right. that, man. You yeah, gotta be no, thinking of the big guys also. Just remember that's that. That's it. I, I I ordered uh I ordered 22 XLs, I ordered 35 XLs, 35 larges, and 10 mediums. Gotcha. So um, there is a limited amount of hoodies and hats that are gonna be available. Um, but if you get the pledge pack, that stuff's gonna come to you again, uh free shipping. So um, and if you're listening to this out of the country, I know I've I've actually talked to a couple podcasts out in Canada, uh we're dealing with people out in New Zealand, Argentina. Um, we're trying to get the word out to everyone we can. If you guys are listening to this somewhere else, we ship international for 30 bucks. That's so, awesome. And that's a good point because I actually have some listeners. I have one guy that tunes in uh, to all the podcast episodes. He's he's in another country. Uh, we have several people that we see that are subscribers to the podcast from out of, out of the country, big waterfowl hunters, you know? So that's awesome, man. That's a good thing. Yeah, no, I wanted to, I wanted to ship internationally because to be honest with you, Jacob, I try not to think about it too much because I don't want to get my hopes up. I like to stay as humble as I can and understand that God, this is in God's hands now and whatever happens with this product happens. But as a duck hunter myself and a waterfowl hunter myself, I cannot tell you how excited I am to get this product into my own possession yeah. because it is going to be so useful. I can just put it in my backpack. 
I can pop it out on those bluebird days, snap it on the side in seconds, and I got sound and motion at the, at my fingertips whenever I need it. I don't need to worry about battery life or anything else. If my spinning wing decoy is out there and it's spinning, my animator is working. It doesn't require any extra power. It just works on its own with the decoy you already have. Yeah, you don't so get I, better I, I'm than that. Excited for it too, man. Your your passion definitely comes through. You get me excited because I'm all about motion in my decoy spread, and I love seeing new products. Which waterfowl do we know George doesn't love a new product coming out to the market? And especially one that's not not a mousetrap or something like that. It, it, it actually, you could see it working before it even hits the market. That's 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 a great thing, man. And, and you know, we talked about the animator. We talked about how to, to get the early jump on getting that product, guys, for our hunting season this upcoming waterfowl season. But we also kind of teased George on some future endeavors that we might have with the company. Is that yeah. something that you kind of want to talk about? I know, I know you mentioned something, or you gave a little hint a while ago about a product that uh, the listeners might have caught or might not have caught. But why don't we why don't we touch on that a little bit? Yeah. So actually, uh, I had my wife go out to the car and get it because I was I was packing it up. We're bringing it out now. This this is a prototype. Okay. So I okay. just want to get all loose. No pressure. No pressure. Know. Yeah. This is a prototype. So this one actually. This prototype, I haven't been putting out there that much because it requires a certain type of material printed that we don't have our hands on yet. And I don't want to put some pillowcase with some hand-drawn marker, you know, crap on, trying to make it so you could see how it's going to – no. You know, but the one thing I can show you is the frame. Okay. So the product is called the wingsuit, and we talked about using the animator without – the wings for Californians. And it's an important thing to understand that it works wonderful without the wings, but it looks goofy without the wings, right? <laughs> Cause you got a duck out there and it's got his shoulders just shaking, you know, and it's water splashing underneath it. And any bird that comes down is going to go, what the, what the heck's going on there? <laughs> so that's where this product came from. And I started to think about what I could do to make something to cover up these, these nubs, these animators that are spinning because I, I use two animators on my ducks because they're all new. Um, you know, I had to buy a bunch of new ducks to test these things on because the shafts are always changing. Um, so I got all the best ducks. I got everything out there. And now I need to figure out how to cover these birds up. Um, so I created something I call the wingsuit. And the wingsuit initially was a collapsible design of a wing that we were going to use kind of like the Chinese fan, you know, like, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, we're yeah, the old fans. Right. So yeah. I did a lot of research on that. We talked about custom printing, uh, custom molding our own fan frames to make this thing completely collapsible down. And uh, then I really started thinking about it and I'm going, I don't know if I want that many moving parts when it comes to waterfowl hunters. <laughs> I think I want something that snaps open and snaps shut. And that was an important part of designing this. So I'm going to show you this, but you got to understand that this is the first prototype um, and not many people have seen this thing. So, all right, guys. Um, so those of you tuning in on YouTube, this is a, uh, this is a sneak peek to, to George's new product he's coming out with. Right. And for those of you listening, I'm sorry, guys, but you, you can go check it out on the, on the YouTube replay of this. Right. So, um, so what you're going to see here is a silicone wire. I'm sure everybody's familiar with this wire. This wire is the kind that you bend and it stays put, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. So this wire is actually much thicker than the wire I got. I just bought 12,000 meters of, uh, <laughs> of oh my wire. God. Yeah. My wife's not super happy about that, but I guess we're dedicated now, aren't we? Um, so we got 12,000 meters of this wire, but what that means is you're going to have plenty of wire for your wingsuit. And that's what's important to understand here is this wire is supposed to be very easily used to set this, to set this frame onto your bird within seconds, opens up, set it on the bird. The head goes here Yep. and you're going to wrap this around the tail of the bird and you got a full set of wings I see it. I can see it. Okay. I now, see the concept. I really want to get a duck. I wish I had a duck right here. Um, dude, it's going to be worth it for me to get a duck. Can you give me 10 seconds? Yeah, go ahead, I man. Heck yeah. 
guys, I can see what he's he's doing there, and that's pre- that's a pretty neat setup. So anything different that we could get and add to our spreads, I'm sure you guys are willing to wait a few seconds to take a look at it. <laughs> so here's your duck, right? Now, this is a spinning wing decoy, but be advised, this will work on any decoy. Okay. Your floating decoys, your wind socks, your silhouettes. You can use this wire and attach this full set of wings wherever you want it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this front piece, and I know that that looks really lit, large and thick. It's going to be about half that thickness. This is just okay. the prototype. You're going to just simply put it over the head and wrap it around the tail. One twist, and that's it, baby. Oh, I put it on upside down. Hang on a second here. There we go. Bam. So that's it right there. You just do a twist on the tail, and you got a completely customizable set of wings. That's cool. That is awesome. I like it. That's it. And there's going to be copper joints here and here, here and here. So you can actually bend and place these wings in any direction that you want. So if you want your wings up high, you can make them look like they're cupped. But this is all going to be custom fabric right here. That this is, is going to be custom printed. We have hand hand designed teal, mallard, widgeon, and pintail. That's awesome, George. Yep. I, I think I think you're on to something there, buddy, for your follow up uh, to your, your the main deal, the main uh, feature right here. So yep. that's awesome. That's pretty cool, man. And what I mean, that's going to change your whole decoy spread completely as far as. You know, because, yeah, you might have a couple of motion decoys, but every other decoy you got in the spread, let's be honest, if you're looking from bird's eye view, it's just decoys sitting there. It's just, you know, it's just that's still it. decoys. This is going to give you some wings, some realistic look to it. I think that's a pretty neat, a neat idea, man. So you can add them. You can you can pick up four or five sets of these things, and if you got ten dozen decoys out there or two dozen decoys out there, I can tell you right now, none of them have their wings out. All those full body hard shells, all those floaters, all of them have their wings buried into the back. That's right. All of them. And if you can take these hand custom designed printed, I mean, these colors are vibrant. The feathers are actual feathers. It has the actual spread of the feathers on the ends of the wings. It's gorgeous. You can find them on my Facebook page um, and, and Instagram. But you take these and you place them wherever you want. You can put two two spinning wing decoys facing each other with their wings and you can have them look like they're fighting each other with the animators kicking underneath the yeah. whole idea behind bluebird waterfowl is to make sure you can s- spread animation right put your yeah. put your animate into your spread and change the way that you uh, the way that you hunt so that's that's the first look at the the wing suit i apologize it's kind of ganky you know but uh no man i get the concept and i think you guys do too if you're seeing it on youtube here uh, it's a it's a pretty great idea, man. And, and that type of how the box thinking is what we all need, George. So that's that's it right there. And when you're going to take it off, just take it off. <laughs> yep, take it off. And, and then store when you go it. to close, just take it off and store it, and you're done. And I think we froze up. We still got you, George. I'm not sure what happened. All of a sudden, we froze up just a tad. But, guys, if you're watching it right here on YouTube, that is a, a pretty cool deal. Uh, you know, you're always going to have guys that say, hey, that, that's not going to work or this isn't going to work. But you know what? Uh, it's all about thinking outside the box, and we talk about it all the time, guys. Thinking outside the box is where it's at. Uh, you know, doing something different, you know. If you like, you know, and I've been guilty of it. I've, I've done it so many times. I can't tell you how many times coming up through the years I did it myself. And we sit there. We don't kill birds. We go out the next hunt. We do the same thing again. Uh, and it's always the same thing. You know, you have the same results. You're not doing real well. And you just keep repeating that process. And thinking outside the box, doing things differently it's just something that you have to do to have that success and and just and, and have those successful days out in the field, guys. And I think we got him back. <laughs> All right, George, we lost you for a split second, but we got you back, man. Well, you know, we were only supposed to be doing this for about 45, 50 minutes. I figured my battery would last, and it didn't. But what I wanted to show you last, sorry about that, boys, is that you take this thing off, guys, it collapses completely flat. And then you take this wire – and you could just wrap it right around the frame of your bird. So when you're going to store this baby, you just got a nice, a nice organized, 
Uh, you could just toss this in the bed of your truck. Talk, toss this thing in the bed of your boat. This is that high quality injected nylon. You don't need no protective case for this. Just toss it in. <laughs> yeah, yep. it's durable. That's awesome, man. That's a great, great, great idea. I think uh, I was just explaining to the guys. I said, you know, you're always going to have haters out there, and some guys are going to look at products and they're going to say, hey, that ain't going to work. Oh, that's too much trouble. But it's all about that thinking outside the box, George, which obviously you're doing as a waterfowl hunter, just like the rest of us. And you're just taking that next step and bringing it and making it easy for us to all get it. So we want to thank you for that as a uh, creator. But, uh, but I know we're getting close to our, our time here and we were trying to keep it right about an hour. You got a busy day tomorrow, George. You told me you're heading out to the Bass Pro Shops over there. And what, what part of California are you in for everybody listening? Uh, we're out of Santa Rosa, so we hunt the Napa Sonoma Marsh area um, out near the Napa River. Uh, tomorrow, we're heading out to Rockland, California, uh, just near Sacramento. Uh, we're going to be at the Bass Pro Shops. We actually have uh, booth time, so we're going to have a booth set up right outside Bass Pro Shops. We're going to be talking to hunters from all over the state, uh, and handing out information about the Kickstarter um, you know, so if you gather one thing from this, it's that the Kickstarter is going to be a very important part of this. Um, but even even bigger than that, guys, if you're here and you're listening and you believe that this might be the big thing, the thing that the, I could tell you right now, the, the, the more I think about it, the more excited I get, because I could tell you right now, this is going to disrupt the waterfowl industry. These accessories to the decoys you already use. Nobody's doing that right now. Nobody's doing it at all. And I can guarantee you somebody else is going to rip it off. But when you look back at this podcast on June 3rd, 2022, you remember that you talked to George Parker of Bluebird Waterfowl and we did it first and we're the originators. And I can promise you, we're going to keep bringing products out there that are going to enhance your decoy spreads. And we're not going to require you to buy any new ducks. That's awesome, man. Great story. Great American story of, of, of an innovator here, a, a fellow waterfowl hunter. And as a community, guys, we stick together as hunters across the United States, as waterfowl hunters. We're a tight-knit group. Go out, support these guys that are, are building products for us to use out in the field. And, uh, George, where can they check? What's the website? Let everybody know how they can get in touch with you and, uh, and, and where they can reach you at, buddy. Yeah, so bluebirdwaterfowl.com is going to be the place where you can uh... – you can find all the products right now. The wingsuit's not on there yet. Like I said, we're expediting the process of getting those wings done. Um, so as soon as that wingsuit's prepared, dude, we're going to be doing another one of these podcasts because I cannot wait to show you what it's going to look like. I can tell you right now, it's going to change the world of waterfowl hunting. But as far as the rest of the products go, right now we just got the animator. They're made for four different birds and five different setups. Um, you can buy them right there on the on the page. Once come uh, October first, I think is when the product's actually going to be available to purchase straight out. Um, there is going to be variable shipping, so if you're close to California, the shipping will be a little bit less. If you're away from California, shipping might be a little bit more. I think it was like seven bucks to Texas and like twelve to New York, um, three bucks to California. So I wanted to do it that way instead of trying to roll in the shipping costs into the price of the product because then I'm just profiting off everybody that doesn't need to pay that much shipping, and that's not my goal. I want to set the product price. It's going to be about thirty four ninety nine, and then the accessory kits are going to run twelve ninety nine for the splash plates. Um, and the extension rods. And I think the case is going to be $24.99 if you want to get the case. And of course, we're going to have combo sets, guys. And once this wingsuit comes out, baby, guess what fits inside the case in that top? The wingsuit's designed to fit right inside that top case. So when you could carry your decoy wings out there, you got your wingsuits and your animators. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You Everything got the edge together. over everybody else. That's right. Make, make it easy. Com. That's right. That, that's awesome. Well, George, man, it has been a pleasure. I appreciate you coming on the show with us. Uh, glad we could be a, just a small part of the release of the new product, man. Uh, you got a fan here. I'm a believer in it. Hopefully you have a lot more now after listening to this episode. Guys, we are going to post a link down to the website uh, right here in our YouTube video. We'll put a description, a link, everything that you need to know to get in touch with George, to get those orders in early. And, uh, and we're going to also post it on our social media platforms. Uh, we'll let you know how to get in touch with them and get those orders in early. So, George, thank you so much, buddy. It's been a pleasure and uh, spending some time with you. And I thank you so much for your time tonight. Yeah, absolutely, Jacob. Thank you so much for having me on. And for anybody that's listening to this, get out there and spread animation. We sure will, man. Thank you. you good luck at Bass Pro Shops this weekend. Y'all have fun. <laughs> and go try to I know, I some get out of my way. <laughs> get some sleep, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. All right, dude. Thank you, man. All right. 
Well, guys, there it is. I told you that we were going to be delivering a product to you tonight that hopefully you guys will find useful this coming season. Man, I have to be honest with you. Have you ever spoken to somebody who's as excited about their product um, and, and ready to get it out there to the world that like like George is right here with the animator guys? I, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm one of those guys that I, I, you know, I've been through fishing tournaments and I've been through the years in, in outdoor industry and sponsorships for this and sponsorships for that and looking to get deals on products. And I got to a point eventually where I said, hey, you know, yeah, there's a there's a million people out there that want to talk to you about products and sponsorships, as I put in quotations, uh, call it, you know. But, you know, I don't want to support companies and people that just don't have products that I believe in personally. And, and I don't want to sound rude when I say that. I'm just being honest with you. I don't want to share products with you guys as listeners here on the podcast uh, just because I have a sponsorship or quote unquote sponsorship with the company because they're giving me free product or they're, uh, they're paying me to say it, you know, through advertising. I want to partner with companies that we truly believe in their product that are truly genuine, good people like George right here is with Bluebird Waterfowl. And, uh, and I get to know people before I bring them on the show and the podcast and share their products or their stories with you guys and you get to know them, introduce you to them. So I hope you you see that as listeners to the podcast. I think those of you who tune in on, on, on a regular basis, you do. And that's probably why you tune into the show because we try to keep it as real as possible. We try to keep it as genuine as possible. And, and truly from the bottom of my heart as a creator of this podcast and, and a social media creator, um, I want to deliver products to you guys and introduce you to products that I think will truly benefit you out there in the field. Whether you're fishing, whether you're hunting, all that type of stuff, I want to deliver products to you guys and introduce you to stuff that's useful and good people that I think you guys need and, and, and can get to know. So um, George is just another one of those people. He's a fantastic guy from the little time I've known him. And really when he contacted me and he said, hey, I, I like what you guys are doing from a podcast standpoint. I see you on YouTube. Uh, I know you have a son uh, and, and young kids that are, are coming up with you hunting. And, uh, man, I got a product that, I, I, that I'm excited about and I want to share with the world. And he, when he showed it to me, I was really impressed with it, you know. And, uh, and I think it's something that I could definitely add to my personal spread and that it would benefit a lot of you guys who listen to the show. Being here in Louisiana, man, that, that, that product, the animator, could be so versatile for everything that we do down here. So I don't want to. Sound like I'm just, I'm a salesperson for them, but I'm, I believe in the product from what I've seen. I'm going to try it myself. I'm going to go out, spend my money on it. I'm going to buy it. And I really think it's a product that's going to be revolutionary to the industry, guys, as far as what it could do and make uh, making our hunts more versatile. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, we appreciate you. We appreciate you giving us a like button. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or any of the streaming platforms where you're listening to us tonight. Uh, we really appreciate those reviews that are coming in on the podcast. And uh, and I'm just excited to be back in the studio, like I mentioned at the opening of the show. Man, I can't tell you how much it means for me to sit down and have that time to spend with all of you and and to get the feedback from all of you um, as far as things that we – ideas we run by each other, things we talk about. And meeting incredible guests like George tonight, man, I mean, just a great guy. Hopefully somebody that will be a friend for, you know, the rest of our hunting lives and maybe even our lifetime. Who knows? But uh, this this sport has given so much to us as waterfowl hunters and as outdoorsmen in general. It's just incredible to, the friendships you make and the people that you meet, man. Not a, I've never really met a bad person in this in doing what we do in here, guys. And it's, uh, it says a lot for the type of uh, people that we, the type of family we are. Let me say that. It's the type of family that we are. So like I mentioned, uh, thank you so much for tuning in to this, this episode of Last Stop Waterfowl Outdoors. You can catch the stream. We're going to have it uh, replaying on our YouTube channel. If you want to see some of the visual stuff that we talked about tonight with the animator that George was showing, go check out our YouTube stream of it. And uh, if you're listening to it through audio, guys, you can check us out on Apple Podcasts. You can check us out at Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, all the big platforms where you listen to your podcast. Look us up, Last Stop Waterfowl Outdoors Podcast. 
Give us a like. We appreciate it. And tell your friends about it, guys. We're going to keep going. We're going to uh, keep it going up until duck season, and then we're going to really crank it up and get going with some more guests to, uh, to introduce to you guys. So thank you so much uh, for tuning in to another episode. And until next time, guys, this is Jacob, the Last Stop Waterfowl Outdoors Podcast. Y'all take care, and we'll see y'all soon. Have a good evening.